Good morning, everybody. I hope you guys are having a great morning today. This week is our last week of this great series that we've been going through called Break It Down. Next week, we are starting a new series called This or That, with the topic being comparison. So, if you want to join us, we are on Zoom at 9.30 on Sunday mornings. You can come join us, play a game, watch a teaching, and have great discussion. Then on Wednesday nights, if you want more social interaction, if you want more teaching, we are still running our Youth Alpha uh, program that runs Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock. We watch the video on YouTube and then we jump on Zoom at about 7.40 and have some discussion with our peers, with other people your age, and we're able to challenge our different thoughts about Christianity. So, if either of those sounded interesting, I really encourage you to come out. I understand that this time of life, at, in this season that we're in, you may be missing just some social interaction. You may be missing just chatting with friends or chatting with other people. And if that is you, I encourage you to come out to either the Sunday morning or the Wednesday night. I'm so glad you are with us this morning. Sunday morning. I pray that you guys gather something from this last teaching in this series, and I pray that you guys may apply it to your life. Thank you guys for joining, and I hope you guys enjoy the teaching this morning. This is Take number 677, 1,045. Now, you think, you think that this is just a table. It's, it's not, it is an old wooden box. And I'll give you two guesses to what's inside. What is it? Is it video games? Uh, is it candy? Is it um, new shoes? No, no, it's books. See, I know, I know you would be wondering this the whole time. So now, congrats. Uh, we did it, we've accomplished this. Now for what we're actually here to talk about. At this point in your school careers, I'm gonna make a guess. I'm going to guess you've been taught a little bit about measuring systems. Now, everybody got so excited when I said measuring systems because who doesn't love a good measuring system? Do you know what I mean? I'll explain. In Europe, there is a different standard measuring system called the metric system. Uh, you following, you know what I mean? The metric system. So there, people use things like grams, meters, and liters to measure distance, weight, and more. In the United States, we measure distance or height with inches, feet, miles, and we have to use things like tablespoons and teaspoons and ounces or other measurements. Now, are, are you following me? What I'm saying is there's two different systems and you have to use a lot of math to convert. It's like how many kilometers are in a mile? Well, why can't we all just, why couldn't we all just measure in miles or kilometers? Like why, why is it, why do we have both? Why can't we just have one? It makes me have to do a lot of math. Math! Anyway, while we have different measuring systems for like how much flour we put in a cake or how far it is to somebody's house, there's one standard of measurement that all people use whether they realize it or not. And that's called comparison. You've heard that word before, right? Comparison is just when we measure something about ourselves against something about someone else. We take this about ourselves and we measure it against that about someone else. You think that this pair of sneakers is awesome until you see that pair the kid in your group has. You think that this grade on your paper is pretty good until you hear about that grade that your best friend got. You think that this guy you're dating is pretty cute until you see that guy your teammate is dating. Do you see what I mean? Comparison is the way we measure this in our lives against that in someone else's life. And it affects more of our lives than I even realize or you probably even realize. Now, here's the thing about comparison. It can lead us to believe things that just aren't true. Things about ourselves and about others. When we compare ourselves to others, 
we can start to believe their lives are better than ours in some way. Because they have so many followers on Instagram or made the game winning shot or got to take that girl to the school dance or they have more friends than we could ever even dream of having. Their lives are perfect. They have everything they could ever want, everything that we want. And because of that, we just assume that their lives are amazing. Even though we may know that's not true because nobody's life is actually perfect. The comparison leaves us feeling like our this will never ever measure up to their that. And when this happens, for some of us, the comparison leads us to so much disappointment. We're disappointed that we don't have what, what they have. We wonder why they got to have the cool new house or the starting spot on the team or the happy family. And we think, why not me? And you'll see like the more we compare, the more disappointed we are with what's like right in front of us. For, for others of us, this might be you, you might just get frustrated. Really, you just don't think it's fair. Don't we deserve to have all the cool stuff or the big friend group or that part in the school play? The fact that somebody else has what we want, what we think we deserve, well, that just doesn't feel fair. And that makes us mad. Or maybe it's different for you. And that feeling comparison brings into your life is hopelessness. Not only do you see something in someone else's life that you want, but you feel like you'll never have it. No matter what you do or how hard you try, you'll never be able to get where they are or have what they have. And that makes you feel hopeless. Or maybe comparison motivates you. Instead of giving up, you decide to try harder, to push faster, to do whatever you have to do to get to where they are. And while motivation and hard work aren't bad things, they can be unhealthy when comparison is the reason behind them. Maybe, just maybe, when you compare yourself to others, you actually feel pretty good about yourself. You might even think that you're better than someone else, that you're more deserving of what you have than they are anyway. You might even look down on others because you feel like your life looks pretty good in comparison. Okay, so that was a lot of examples and you might relate to one of those. Regardless of how comparison makes you feel or which of those examples you relate to most, here's what I think might be true. Comparison still never really takes you anywhere because as soon as you reach the thing you want, as soon as you go from, from your this to their that, you find something else to compare to. It's never enough. The cycle never ends and you end up struggling with those same feelings of disappointment, frustration, hopelessness, and more all over again. Now, I don't know about you, but I bet there has to be a better way. And lucky for us, I think there is. A way that kind of doesn't leave us stuck in the cycle of comparison, and it can be found in the Bible. The letter we're gonna look at today was written by a guy named Paul. Paul was a leader in the spread of the Christian faith, and he often wrote letters to encourage believers in churches in different areas. In the letter that we're gonna look at today, Paul addressed issues born out of comparison to a group of church members in a city called Corinth. Here's what he said. Oh, don't worry, we wouldn't dare say that we are as wonderful as these other men who tell you how important they are. But they are only comparing themselves with each other, using themselves as the standard of measurement. How ignorant. So even though Paul was specifically talking about some false teachers who were bragging about their spirituality, the same truth applies to me and to you today. Basically, Paul was saying, listen, comparing yourself to other people stinks. It's not smart. It's not wise, it's not helpful. So let's not do that, okay? I think probably what Paul wanted us to know was that when we compare ourselves to each other, we're using the wrong measurement. When we hold up our real life to somebody else's life on social media, when we compare the way our family looks to the way another family looks, when we look at what we have in comparison to what somebody else has, we always seem to end up on the losing end. And that's because we're looking in the wrong place. And I know this is true not only because of the way comparison makes us feel, but because of something else Paul said in this very same letter. Let me show you. When people commend or compliment and praise themselves, it doesn't count for much. The important thing is for the Lord to commend them. So it's saying that it's not about how we measure up in comparison to other people. It's not about how our this stands in comparison to their that. As Paul said, that doesn't really count for much, but what does count is this, and that's how God sees us. That's our standard. That's the place we can look to see how we measure up. 
And the good news is this, God doesn't compare you to others. How do I know that? Because of Jesus. We can look at the way Jesus treated people while he was here on earth as proof of how God sees me and you today. Jesus didn't rank people around him from best to worst. He didn't compare one single person to his own perfection. Instead, he turned the whole system upside down, basing the way he sees all people on one thing, only one thing, God's love. God isn't using the people around you as some sort of measuring stick to determine your worth or your value. Instead, he is simply looking at you through his eyes. He's seeing your life through his love. And that's a place you will always measure up. So since this is true, since God doesn't compare you to others, then what can we do to stop comparing ourselves? There's one more truth I wanna share with you that I think could help. It's some wisdom from a book called Proverbs that will give me and you an idea of where to start. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Comparison starts in our hearts. It starts because something in us feels unhappy with this in our lives compared to that in somebody else's. So if we want to avoid that feeling, we have to stop it where it starts. And that's our hearts. As this proverb says, we have to guard our hearts. So here are a few ideas I have for how you can guard your heart. First, Pay attention to your feelings. Notice the way your mood or your outlook changes when you start to compare yourself to somebody else. Do you feel disappointed, frustrated, angry, anxious? Those feelings might actually be clues that you're headed down a path of comparison. They're a signal that you need to guard your heart. Another thing you can do is you can find out what's fueling it. What are you looking at, thinking about, or doing when you start to feel those things? What's fueling your negative feelings of comparison? Is it a post on social media? A TV show that you're watching? A circumstance in your life that you wish was just different? If it's something in your control, take a step away from it. Close the app, turn off the TV, take a break from that friend group for a day or so. Take a step to guard your heart from the things that cause you to compare. And if it's something you can't control, talk to somebody about it. Maybe you're unhappy with something about your home life, or you have a friend you're jealous of, or you wish you'd gotten the top spot on your team. Things like that can cause you to compare. Your group leader is a great person to help you identify steps you can take to change and guard your heart in those areas. And the last thing is celebrate what you do have. Instead of filling your heart with comparison, Fill it with the acknowledgement of the things that you do have, the things that you're thankful for, the things that you like about yourself and your life. See, like the way God sees you is the best place to start. Make a list of the ways he sees you. Send an encouraging text to someone you appreciate or write down all the things you're grateful for in your own life. When you're tempted to compare, fill that space in your heart with gratitude. Fill it with something that reminds you of the truth that God doesn't compare you to others. If you're still thinking you're the only one struggling with comparing yourself to others, that's not true. Every single one of us, me too, struggles with comparing ourselves in different situations and different areas of our lives. The good thing is we don't have to struggle alone. One of the reasons we have groups is to give you a place to talk about these things and become more aware of them. So one more question for you. As you go to your group today, I want you to think about this. How does comparing myself to others usually make me feel? That was a spider. Peace.